there! Welcome back to Fair's Tutorials. Now, in today's session, we'll be looking at a particular topic, but I want you to discover what it is. Can you rearrange those letters for them to make sense? Alright, well, if your answer was community nutrition, you are correct. Section 1 Diet and Health. And in today's episode, we'll be looking at Content 8 and Content 9. Content 8, which has to do with community nutrition, and Content 9, which has to do with vulnerable groups in the community and their nutritional problems. Content 8. Now, in Content 8, We'll be looking at the definition for community nutrition and also the importance of community nutrition. Now, at the end of the lesson, you should be able to state the definition of community nutrition and also explain the importance of community nutrition. Now guys, if you were supposed to give a definition for community nutrition, what would you say it is? What is nutrition? Based on your prior knowledge, you should be able to know what nutrition is, right? Now, put them together. Community nutrition. Let us see if you're thinking on the correct path. What is community nutrition? Community nutrition describes the wide range of programs and delivery settings for disseminating nutrition-related information, education and healthcare services to a population within a particular geographical region. So simply put, we may say community nutrition refers to all the programs that are set out to what? To inform the community or the persons living within the community about nutrition related problems and what educate them about healthcare services so why would you think something like this would be important why is it important for persons to be educated about nutrition related health problems and what you're supposed to eat and have access to healthcare services why is that so right let us look at some more importance community nutrition is important for the following reasons one it supports community to address child malnutrition prevention screening referrals and also treatment good it promotes good health hygiene and nutrition behaviors also, it provides nutrition education, provide nutrition and diet counseling for the vulnerable groups, and also to promote the dietary guidelines. Now, in previous videos, we spoke of the different dietary guidelines, why they are important, and also some measures that are can be put in place for us to maintain these dietary guidelines now if you missed that video it is very important for you to watch it so you can understand what are the different guidelines or the different dietary guidelines right such as limit the amount of salt and processed food taken or increase the consumption of dietary fiber right now let us look at what you have discovered now Based on what we've just discussed, are you able to give a definition of community nutrition? Yes, you should be able to. And also to explain three importance of community nutrition. So let's review. Community nutrition, simply put, refers to all the nutrition educational programs that are put in place in order to what? The importance of it now what? To promote good health and well-being for the persons within the community. 
they access things such as good personal hygiene, learn about nutrition education, the proper food that they're supposed to eat, follow the dietary guidelines so that they can prevent nutrition related health problems. Good. Now, let us look at content nine. And in content nine, we'll be looking at vulnerable groups in the community. When we speak of the term vulnerable, what do you think we're hinting at? Hmm? Vulnerable groups refers to the persons that who may be prone or more at risk of developing certain nutritional problems. Let's look at the learning objectives for content nine. So by the end of this lesson, you should be able to identify the vulnerable groups in the community and also outline at least two nutritional problems which affects the vulnerable group within the community. Now, based on the description that I gave you of vulnerable groups, persons who were more prone of probably developing nutritional related disorders or problems who are the persons or who are the groups in the community that you think based on their present situation will make them vulnerable now let us take a look at these images we have four images here now based on these can you get an idea of who the vulnerable groups in the community are or may include so we have infants or we may say toddlers infants and toddlers we have the elderly pregnant and lactating women and all the and also the picture the last picture here refers to persons who have what persons who are specially able well, let us look at the listing so we have infants toddlers and elderly pregnant and lactating women and also persons who are specially abled and persons who are poverty stricken. Good. So why do you think infant, toddlers and elderly would be vulnerable? Why is that so? If you stated that they may need extra care or persons to take care of them, they may have to rely on persons for care, then you are correct, right? Pregnant and lactating women, remember they're what? They're cater catering for two. Or we may say eating for two. Also, they may have eating for two no, doesn't mean two plates of food, but all but a food that is nutritionally adequate, right? Also, they may also face other problems such as gestational diabetes, constipation, and other uh, nausea, fatigue. So these things may affect their nutrition, right? Also, special persons who are specially abled may not be able to have physical access to food that they can go out and purchase what they want, and therefore they may have to rely on someone. Good. And poverty stricken, these persons will not have the the amount of money. They will not have any money to purchase the adequate foods that they need for their nutrition. As we speak of elderly, most persons elderly are retired. So you may find out too that they may face, some of them may face financial problems. Good? All right. Now, let us look at the nutritional problems of vulnerable groups within the community. So we speak of malnutrition. Now, there are two types of malnutrition. Normally, when we speak of malnutrition, persons tend to think that they only, refers, they only refer to persons who are underweight. But in fact, the two types of malnutrition are undernutrition and overnutrition, right? And special nutrients needs. So these persons will need a balanced diet. Good? Now, let us look at the, these concepts in more details. So malnutrition may be defined as an incorrect or unbalanced intake of nutrients. Now when the nutrients needs are incorrect or unbalanced, what arises? So the person may be overnourished or undernourished, right? Now let us look at the definition for these concepts. 
let us first start with undernutrition. Now, undernutrition refers to the insufficient intake of nutrients. Good? And therefore, based on nutritional assessment, as you see the one, the image down below, you can see what? They're taking the measurements of the arm. Do you remember which nutritional assessment is being done here? If your answer was anthropometric, then you are correct. Right. Now, let us look on the flip side. Another form of malnutrition is also overnutrition. And overnutrition may be defined as a form of malnutrition in which the intake of nutrients is oversupplied, right? The amount of nutrients exceed the amount required for normal growth and development. Therefore, persons who are overnourished are obese because they're taking in more than what they, they, their bodies require. Therefore, it is stored as fat. Good? Now, checkpoint. You should be able to identify the vulnerable groups in the community and also outline at least two nutritional problems which affects the vulnerable group within the community. Now that we know what community nutrition is, and also the importance of community nutrition, it's now time for us to look at the organizations that are involved in community nutrition. Now, local government and non-governmental organizations in individual countries that are involved in community nutrition includes Ministry of Health, hospitals, public health clinics, and also nutrition centers. Now, as it relates to regional and international organization, regional as in in the Caribbean and international, outside the bands of the Caribbean we're speaking of, World Food Program, World Health Organization, Food and Agricultural Organization, United Nations Children's Fund, United Nations Development Program, Pan-American Health Organizations, Canadian Public Health Association, and also the Caribbean Food and Nutrition Institute. And these organizations are the regional and international organizations that are involved in community nutrition. You have made it to the end of the video. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share,